back in session? Do we have everybody yet? No, no, wait, no, 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 Thank you all for waiting. I'm sorry this took so long. Um, usually we do executive session at the end, but that wasn't how it worked today. So anyway, um, we're going to start. Um, if I may have a motion to appoint Ananda Donahue as an administrator at $105,000 a year starting. Do we have a starting date? Do we know? Um, it'll be in the minutes starting when it's approximately 45 days from March. Okay. All right. If I may have a motion to pull that off. Um, Shirley seconded by Michelle. All those in favor? Okay. Congratulations. You have to come up and do the <laughs> smile <laughs> shake. Oh, do I get to? This <laughs> exciting. Get a cup. <laughs> And this will be the last day of wearing heels because <laughs> once you're in. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you have to take hey, shake, shake, smile. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. Okay, and may I have a motion to appoint uh, Brianne Taylor as a provision, provisional administrator until certified as a school building leader in New York State at $95,000 a year starting whenever she's starting? Um, 98. 98 until she's served. Until she's certified. Yeah. Okay, yes, I said that. Until yeah, certified. Did. Didn't I? Yes. Okay. All right. We're yes, good. Did you have a motion? John. John, seconded by. Oh, Kim. Sorry. All those in favor? Okay. Brianna, you got the, you got the deal. <laughs> yeah. This is how this works. All right. Okay. So you take, you take, you smile. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. We apparently. Um, need to get the cross country merger with Whitehall um, for 2023 24 um, approved. So, may I have a motion to do so? Um, Kim, seconded by Ed. All those in favor? Happy. Yeah. Long awaited budget workshop. This is going to be a very condensed version. <laughs> yeah, but we oh, were funny. Very long. Um, so I don't know who's moving the screen, but we can move the screen. Yeah. I don't have it. Right here. <laughs> now you do. Now you do. Okay. Now you can back over. You have the power. <laughs> you can take those. Uh, so this is just a quick um, overview. Um, you know how when we start and um, what goes into preparing the budget. Who has input? Um, you know, teachers, um, administrators, you know, this is certainly um, <coughs> built on the wishes and the needs and the goals of everyone um, as we go into a new school year. Uh, what's important, um, what's necessary um, is, sub is submitted to me and I put it together. That's really all I do. So, um, I'm going to let um, Justin talk about his budget. Um, this is basically his uh, request for the year, and um, we can start. Yeah, so this slide here that Kathy's got is our contractual expenses, um, coaching stipend, stuff like that. The only really big change this year um, is that I've been talking with Steve Palmer and Aaron Brzezinski. We're looking for money to do weight room upgrades, um, and obviously that equipment is not very cheap, but we're looking to start off this year of, of around you know, 30 to $35,000 for weight room upgrades and then build it as we go along. Um, just some of the equipment in there is dated, some of the benches are ripped. Um, and now that we have the strength and conditioning coach for all of our athletic seasons in the summertime, 
you know, him and I would just like to really put in a, a big push to just start upgrading that facility. Um, and this would be just a good starting piece for it. So, um, but contractually, that's really the only change there. Um, on the supplies, um, which is the next slide, Kathy's got, and she's got it broken down by sport and everything. It's the big thing every, every year I try and get one quote bigger item for each teams. Um, I've been the 80 now 5 years. I haven't done anything for wrestling. Wrestling is looking to get a new, uh, safety throwing mat up there. Um, that's around $5,000 and an extra 500 for shipping. Um, Coach Palmer and I have looked at that in a great detail. It's something that he's never had to be a huge upgrade for that facility. It's about an eight to nine inch thick mat just to do different wrestling, throwing and technique moves and stuff like that. Um, that especially the younger kids might not be comfortable doing on a regular wrestling mat. So it's just a good way to kind of build that up and build those kids confidence up. But that's really outside of the weight room upgrades. That is the only team with a big ticket item per se for this for this upcoming year. Now, is there is uniform replacement built into this, into these chart? Like, are there teams that are up for uniform yeah, replacement so, this year that yeah. are built into these? Yeah, it's built in. So, like, next year it's baseball, softball, indoor slash outdoor track slash cross country, and the bowling team as well. That money is broken down in the uniform column that Kathy has. Um, I added a little bit more to it this year simply because stuff has just gotten expensive. Prices have gone up by uniforms. Um, usually, we try and outfit all three. So like baseball money is $5,000 there. That should be for varsity JV and modified uniform. The only time we haven't done that is sometimes our uniforms are in okay condition. If those jerseys are acceptable, we bump them down to the modifieds and then we'll add varsity like an extra warm up jacket or something like that. So um, baseball and softball were due this year, but during the COVID year and as well as track during the COVID year, we had the one year we didn't wear any uniforms. So the rotation just been bumped back, um, bumped back a year, I should say. And your coaches' stipends, mm -hmm. do you feel that they're adequate to, to either, i.e., the shortages that you're experiencing in coaches? Mm -hmm. Is it because of money or is it because people just aren't available? It's a combination of people aren't available, you know, and I, you know, I've been able to try and recruit coaches from Lake George Queensbury. Part of it is the traveling out to Granville. Um, and obviously, that's something to look at to kind of bump those up during contract negotiations, you know, in the, in the near future. But that I think that would certainly certainly help in my opinion. Justin, I see you know on the top former trainer there's like two thousand dollars. Yeah. And the dues, do they really go? The dues, I don't know what you're actually paying. The dues they? are paying like we have to pay the NISFA state dues every year. We have to pay Adirondack League dues. We have to pay Section Two dues to be and members of those organizations. I see from previous years they go up about two thousand dollars each year. Yeah, so NISFA. The Adirondack League hasn't charged the last couple of years because of the COVID pandemic. Um, this year, we're going back to charging the schools the dues for that. So, uh, NISFA has changed their dues process. It's based on how many kids you have in the school. That formula has changed. It used to be a flat rate, but now it's, like I said, it's number of kids you have in the school. And that, unfortunately, has caused an increase in those dues. It's the number of kids in the school, not the kids playing. Correct. Like the beds. So like yes, it's based yeah. off your enrollment in the school. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's a dollar amount per kid yeah, over a certain amount of kids. And I, I don't have that number off the top of my head. But they changed it probably, what, two or three years ago, Tom? Mm -hmm. Maybe two years ago. And that the whole formula has changed. And that's the increase for the dues on that. And your um, top form trainer, that's actually your coach's training, correct? Yeah, the top form trainer right now with the, with the, the 2000, there, that's for our coach to get first aid CPR for free. As well as the coaching courses that you need, they get those at a huge discount as well through that. That's per the current contract. Right, okay. Yep. And as to our other conversation, did that rate include this fee, or was that you know, the conversation about the trainer from mm -hmm. before? Is that fee was that fee built into that, or was that all the stuff that we currently have now with that would be a part of that? Gotcha. Yep. Good. Yep. I believe right time we were discussing that the next next month yeah, meeting. Yeah, okay. third, that, that'll be on as an old bit. It's just yep. thing to pick back up. I just wanted to. Yeah. Yes, no, nope, I'm yeah. just curious if yeah, that it, was, it, it if it was an inclusive for if that would be an additional term. If, yeah, it's the same thing there. All that stuff would be a part of it. And that's two thousand is just for the training. It wasn't that I think you said at last meeting it was like used to be eight thousand because they were here because they were here one day a week. Correct. This is just for coaches education and a lot of those people, you know, you can do those courses online for two to three hundred dollars. We get them a huge discount through them. Um, and then, like I said, first aid CPR, they come here and do that for free once, sometimes twice a year. Yep. 
Any more questions? Um, next is uh, technology, computer system instruction. Jeremy um, is going to talk a little bit about his request for next year. Uh, I just wanted to point out a few things. Uh, cybersecurity insurance, we included in my budget because it's cybersecurity, so I have to something goes there. Um, the big, couple of big things are the BOCES uh, LAN equipment. Um, this line is going up um, fairly significantly. We've been using grant monies um, the past few years to pay for the Chromebook um, rotation and replacing Chromebooks. And um, we're budget basically need to budget in to replace those Chromebooks as, as they become uh, not usable anymore. Um, so that's that's why that number is uh, growing so much. Um, the software is growing a little bit, and some of that has to do goes back to the cybersecurity insurance or cybersecurity. Uh, make sure we have the um, uh, this, the software available for that, and, and on top of the, the already what we use for uh, teaching. Um, the we're also going to do uh, classroom. Uh, technology integration specialist one day a week uh, with BOCES, and that's um, three quarters of the way down. That's a new line this year as well. Um, and we're also increasing our um, BOCES support uh, with another uh, uh, day of technology support with BOCES. Um, those are the big things I wanted to point out. Um, do you have any questions for me? Lamb no? no. Just real quick, J Jeremy, what's the uh, what's the like the I guess for lack of a better what's the shelf life on the Chromebook? You, we getting three years out of them, we getting five years out of them, or five, five, six. Um, they say you can get eight out of them, but some days, some years, you're lucky to get five or six out of them. And so, what do we just we purchase in we purchase new? We get rid of the old, the oldest on the back end, and just kind of cycle them that way. Yeah. So every year, the oldest ones are being yeah. cycled out. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and we're now fully Chromebooked all the way down to kindergarten, correct? Yeah, we're down to kindergarten. Yes, we are. Anybody else have a question? Mm -mm. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so um, this is the sheet where um, costs are projected for um, district clerk, superintendent's office. Um, we include um, costs for contractual for um, the district clerk, supplies and materials, uh, mostly related to our budget vote. Um, we have the salaries for superintendent, superintendent secretary, and contractual and supplies for that office budgeted. Not sure, but I think you missed board member salary. Board member salary. Year in and year out salary. Good catch. That effort just ran out of confidence. It wasn't a space big enough to put the number. And then you have the business office where we have um, positions for the business manager, payroll, um, account clerk. Human resource director, um, regist registrar, half of um, a type of salary for registrar, and equipment. Um, time clocks are budgeted. We are um, uh, pending this initiative to implement the time clock system, hopefully by the start of next school year. Um, there's also um, secret superintendent secretary furniture budgeted for next year. Um, and then there's some contractual costs for. Um, ASBO dues and Ed Data is the purchasing network where we um, purchase all of our supplies. It's a cooperative network, so costs are built in for that. Um, we do save of approximately 40% on our supplies for going through that purchasing network. Um, and then we have some costs for auditing and our internal claims auditor. And the internal claims auditor is um, an internal position that audits all of our disbursements um, before they, they come to the board. Page 10. Page 10. Page 10. What are we doing with our, our public information specialist? They, they, they got a raise. Yes, they did. That's um that's, that's a BOCES. Yeah, BOCES that was brought on this year. Um, Mr. McGurl contracted with BOCES for public relations. Um, and that is the cost for one day a week. Oh. Wow. Pay in 24000 for one day. Yes. You get, 80, is it fundable? 
We get about 70, 74% back available. Um, um, not, not all of it. Not all of it. Sorry. <laughs> The, the difference is what it actually costs money. Okay. Um, so if, <laughs> if BOCES were, if the legislature were to agree to fund BOCES salaries over the $30,000 cap, it would all be aidable at that percentage. It is not because that the legislature has not agreed to that. Um, yet. We not, hope they do. We fund them over the <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's a new the attention here. Page 10. Um, district treasurer is a part time position um, and that is uh, budgeted here as well as um, tax collection, which is an annual stipend. And we have costs that we pay the county for the printing of the tax bills, um, which is also under that tax collection category. Our fiscal agent fees um, each year I have to provide um, just, um, the SEC information about um, our rating for our school, our financials um, show how we are doing financially. And then you have to provide like a community wide um, informational gathering. It takes me about three days to do, but that is fiscal advisors who files that with the uh, SEC. So we have to pay them a fee for um, their information on that under fiscal agent fees. Our legal costs are budgeted and our school resource officers budget in as well as advertising for our personnel and our BOCES online recruiting costs. And the last is the public information specialist at one day a week. <coughs> we have costs for our copiers, um, our, our NERIC costs, which BOCES regional information systems. That are, those are significant costs for eSchool, for Frontline, for WinCap. Um, we receive a lot of support through NERIC. Um, our BOCES election management software that's across contract is also budgeted. And this year new is the um, cost for our BOCES event manager and asset management system that has got, been implemented um, to track um, our work order, our, our building requests, and preventive maintenance for um, our buildings. Expenses include insurance costs. Um, and again, BOCES administration and BOCES rent costs are built in for next year. Aprons and work boots are for our staff, our support staff, staff security staff, and our maintenance staff. And then the principals page, um, we budgeted three 12 month administrators, <coughs> one 10 month administrator for the high school. Clerical support positions. Um, and also other costs for those main office um, supplies. Um, and I think some, yes, some small contractual costs. Our BOCES health and safety program, um, that's need and risk management that we contract um, through which we BOCES for. And we have in-service training costs budgeted um, for BOCES um, reimbursement. <laughs> Our instructional budget includes costs for K through two, three through six teachers. We have 17 teachers budgeted next year for Mary J. Tanner. We have 18 budgeted for um, GES of the general fund and 40 teachers budgeted at the high school. Tutoring salaries, um, that's a large number because if we do um, receive the high impact tutoring from the legislative budget, um, which I'm hearing it might be dead on arrival, um, you know, we could certainly change that number if it is um, not gonna happen, but that is budgeted for the 100,000 that um, the governor pr proposed in her budget for high impact tutoring. Sub costs, um, we continue to, um, uh, exceed our budget numbers in those areas and um, supports supports include 14 teaching assistants and seven monitors for next school year. In that number, we have budgeted an extra hall monitor for the high school. Um, that is a new position that will be um, hired um, just for the high school. Instructional equipment, we are budgeting for third grade student classroom furniture, um, teacher, 
um, furniture uh, drum set for the high school and chairs and desks for um, classrooms at the high school. We'd like to, uh, to do four um, classrooms next year at the high school. Um, I have a question. The third grade student classroom furniture, that's because they're moving over, but their furniture isn't coming with them because they're using furniture there. Something else? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just say moving. Yeah, no. Makes sense. Um, and there's additional costs for um, conference expenses, assemblies, repairs, and maintenance um, for each school building. Um, supplies, um, we, we've kind of kept those level for the high school, um, up a little bit for GES and um, up for Mary J. Tanner. And these all come from the teachers through their building principals. Um, anything they're requested has to be approved by the building principal. Um, and then it comes um, to Mr. McGurl if there's anything that's significant um, changes, and then it comes to you. Foster placements, we are billed sometimes from other districts for students who are placed in foster care in their district who are attending Granville. So there's some money budgeted for that. Our textbooks, um, that is categorical state aid. If we don't spend it, we lose it. So we like to spend that. <coughs> Our BOCI services are outlined, our, our district wide testing. Um, we have um, costs for our itinerant ESL teacher for a student attending Mary J. Tanner, and that has been budgeted. And our gifted and talented program is also budgeted um, for students next year, as is our summer school program. Is that more just more kids? I think why the summer school goes up so much. Um, I think we're still working out the details of it, but that's just a number that I. Is that also the, that's also the increase the salary rate for the summer school this year? We haven't yeah. raised it in nine, I believe it was nine years when Tony Mullen told me. Mm -hmm. So we are increasing the rate as Can well for summer school. That? Uh, I mean, uh, it's a projection, John, based on what we you know. That no, was down a lot. <coughs> down this year quite a bit, then back up to the yeah. what it was two years ago. Yeah. Hang on, I'm confused on that. Um, so the summer six oh summer success program, are we not having that? Because it's that zeros is, and um, cross. That's funded, that's funded by, by grants. a grant right now. So yes. oh oh oh, oh yeah, sorry, I was that gotcha. Gotcha. that's why it's zeros yes. in between. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, that's what John yeah. yeah. Okay, this one, yeah, I'm protecting more. Right. Oh, so that may be. Yeah. Why do we take? Uh, um, we we didn't have um a lot of students last summer. Yeah, I don't think we did. We had as many as we've had in the past. I'm not but didn't we? We didn't have it here, right? We have it here. Get it over to yeah. our GS. No, I know, but we didn't have it in this building. No, no. Yeah. They may not have been making up rates just because they didn't have to, right? That would about that'd be a large sum. Yeah, I don't remember it normally, yeah. but if they didn't have to take those tests. Because I know I budgeted a lot more than what we actually. Right, your budget. Up, yeah, you're, 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 you're over your budget's the same, but your mm -hmm. your actual expenditure will drop. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we didn't have a lot. And our special ed, um, this includes um, teaching salaries, 21.5 teachers are budgeted. Um, we had two openings, I believe, at the high school and a 0.5 teacher that was requested for PEF. Oh, MJT. Sorry. MJT, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and substitute salaries are budgeted. And um, teaching assistants and aides are also budgeted for special ed. We have 16 of those budgeted um, for that category. And equipment and contractual services, um, music therapy, orientation, mobility training, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy. Um, are, we do contract out for physical therapy services. Um, so that, that's budgeted as a Is that why there's such a price discrepancy between the PT and the OT? Pardon me? Is that why the price is so dramatically different between physical therapy? Um, for contracting therapy? out? No, no, it's just what's been requested for 
for the need because you do have you do have people here doing that correct yeah so ot we have an occupational therapist on staff um and pt we don't we contract out with it yeah. the so, yeah. that explains it okay yeah. um specialist <clears throat> supplies and then our private placements um prospect school um st coleman's um and oak hills are also budgeted is most of that just their rates have gone up um, the number of students, number of students, students is also. Is yeah, yeah. number of students has changed, um, and their rates do go up. Um, are, are the number of students going up? They seem to have been going up, yes, over the years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there there's been a, a trend to try to find some particular placements. Is that correct, Anne Marie? Yeah, but it looks I mean, like our whole population is just ten kids that are being. Mm -hmm. Placed out. Is that correct, Amber? That's um, private schools. Both yeah. these, the, the yeah. Schools. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But for your for your private placements, those are the kids where either both these just a combo program or both their programs aren't suitable. And the same here. And I think. And I, again, I hate to blame COVID for anything. However, I would. I think a good summary is that the kids that we can't service, the need is significantly higher now than it would have been. Four years ago, I think where we could have tried to some of it, we might have been able to try to sort through here. It's pretty profound. Because. So this right, so this isn't that group that we're talking about trying to bring back home. No, no. these are, these are kids. Most of these kids, and Emory could speak to this. <clears throat> most of the kids were here, and we're saying we can't manage it here, gotcha. or it's not the appropriate sure. placement. Sure. Okay. And, and the prospect students, I don't think, have ever been here. They're um, quite. Uh, and have been a prospect from the beginning. And that actually was five last year and four this year because we, um, well, four this year and five uh, last school year. Did, um, one student did page out. Okay. Um, on page 18 is the um, high cost students that we do um, send to BOCES programs. Um, we have 1214 programs um, where we budgeted four students to attend next year. Um, with two teacher aides in the program. Um, we have a 412 program, um, two students attend, and 611 um, programs at BOCES, and we've budgeted for 15 students to attend those programs. So those are all out of district high cost um, placements for BOCES. Do we, do we on those pay only for the days they attend? Or do you contract for the total amount, and even if they're absent, you still yes, you still you, pay. You, you pay. Yeah, you pay for. Um, do most of them attend each each well, day, or is attendance an issue there too? We have some um, attendance issues. Um, one student, um, you know, was dropped because they weren't attending at all. But um, the big thing about policy is to even related services, um, we pay for the year, even if the services aren't. Uh, Given. And they are given consistently most of the time, but if a, a, a provider is absent and, and it's not given, you do pay just one cost for the year, correct, Kathy? Correct, and we ran into a lot of that during COVID. Yes. Where they weren't going. Where they weren't going. Or and so we, paid, be provided. we paid those costs regardless. Yeah. But for the most part, most students do attend um, our, C our occupational ed CT program, uh, we have budgeted for 32 students to attend those programs at OCs and four students um, to, to attend Sudi Adirondack program. The motion. 32 is what the request was as well, or was there a waiting list? Or? Yeah, no, we filled the entire request. Okay. Yeah. I think actually we might have one extra suite. In okay. case somebody moves in, I believe it's either one or two. Um, in case somebody moves in over the summer, that like say you move from Hartford and you're already in a BOCES program, you come to us as a senior so that you're not stuck without a program. Sure. Um, in the event that you didn't have a seat, and that happened, what would you do? So, so we would most likely just send the kid anyway and come up with the money for it because <laughs> they've already started a there. They're, they're already in it. The yeah. difference would be if you say, for example, you had a student come in their junior or senior year that's not enrolled in a program, but shows up at a door and says, I really want to go. That becomes more problematic twofold. One is we didn't have the request. You're not already in a program. And also they have a lottery system to get into those. So if you say, you know, I'll take a popular one. You want to go into welding. 
that most likely at that point in time has a pretty significant rating list. The chance of you getting in that is between some and none at that at that point in time. Um, but if we have a kid show up at the door that's already in a program, we would do our best to accommodate it. Do we have a problem with kids fulfilling that, that obligation? So they enroll in the program, they go there September, mid October, say this isn't for me. And it, it does happen. I don't want to say it doesn't happen. It does happen. And it's the same as those special ed programs. So Once you pass it's it's I believe it's October 1st. I might be wrong about that. It's actually mid It's not a very long window. Yeah, there's a like short window. Once, doorway once we pass that, we're paying one way or the other. <laughs> it's like three weeks after school starts. It does happen, but it would definitely be the oddity. That's and if sure. it does happen, it happens early enough, do you have the ability to, to rotate someone else into it, into their slot? You could if you had somebody, okay. if they were ready for that program and they were they were part of that process. But yeah, you probably could. Okay. I don't think that. I'm trying to think back to my principal days, I remember ever doing that, but I, I think you could. Yeah. yeah. We have an attendance criteria for them to, to get into it. Don't we? Yeah, so we look at yeah, on track to graduate. Attendance. Interest in the program, which is a pretty nebulous kind of thing. Um, but the big ones are you on, tech, on track to graduate and what's your attendance look like? Because we what? don't want to run the risk of paying for one of these programs and then somebody doesn't show up. That's not to say that kids don't change their attendance patterns between the time they start as a junior and they graduate as a senior. You may have a kid with great attendance, gets in the program, and then things happen mid year through their junior year, they start not coming to school. What's, what is our attendance criteria? What percent do we look at? Before? I don't Prior know off the top of my head. But I can ask guidance, but I don't know off the top of my head. They look at the average too. Average Their grades? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That that contributes to being on I mean, If you're failing your classes, you're not on track mm -hmm. to graduate. Let me uh, make a note though. I can get that number for you. Um, our library, we have one librarian here at the high school, budgeted next year, as well as costs for um, supplies books, um, aiming materials, and subscriptions. And our BOCES costs for media um, and all the electronic databases that, that Mary uses um, with the library program. The slide uh, includes costs for our guidance department, our, our nurses, and our psychologist supplies, contractual services, um, and um, instructional services. So, curricular activities, social work, um, the CSC office. Um, this is an increase. Um, for the special ed director that we are adding um, to CSC next year, along with the pupil personnel service director. And we've also added another clerical position for CSC. So you see um, 2.5 FTEs. The other half is budgeted to a grant. And you have contractual costs for a consultant um, who is um, Dave Mitchell, who's been assisting, um, who will continue to assist um, for next year. Social work services, we have three FTEs budgeted for social workers. And then our co-curricular, those are all the advisories that we um, we have per the GTA contract and costs for um, band, chorus, OAS, um, and honor society. It's also budgeted in those. This is our, our fringe benefit. Um, all of our costs for retirement and our costs for Social Security, um, which is a payroll tax, workers comp, unemployment, employees benefit assistance program, and our medical and dental insurance costs. Our, our health insurance did go up 12% over last year. Yeah. Um, and and I had, you, you won't see 12% from this number to budget to budget because. Um, a lot of that is I, I do project it out per person. So as people come and go, that number changes. And the last slide is cost for our debt. Um, we do have declining debt, but we will be bonding in June for the new capital program, capital project that is ending. Um, so once that's finalized, we'll send that in and we'll bond over 15 years. So there is projected debt. 
um, for next for next school year. What's not in the budget for the taxpayers? Um, positions that we have budgeted to grants. Um, are you universal pre K? We have three teachers, three teaching assistants. That's an annual renewal. Um, and you know, we did um, go to full day UPK this year, so we did get funding for next year and that that same amount. Three classrooms. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, our federal dollars, our education stabilization funding, um, the CURSA funding. Um, we have one teacher that will end um, this coming September. And then our, our American Rescue Plan monies go until the following September, September 2024. We have seven teachers, two teaching assistants budgeted in the American Rescue Plan Elementary and Secondary School Relief Fund. We have five teaching positions budgeted in the Impact of Lost Instruction American Rescue Plan budget. And then we have some costs for our summer learning for bus drivers and teacher professional development and some tutoring costs and homework club costs for the after school program that um, we have budgeted. So those are things that are not in the taxpayer budget because they are federally funded, um, but there is um, a date that funding will end. Just bring it to everyone's attention. And this is just a summary of what we look at over the last um, three years and proposed. Um, just giving you an idea of what's gone up and why. Um, it's like a nice million dollar pattern. Yeah. <laughs> just a million dollars. Someday we're going to talk about real money. <laughs> um, so we are up a, a 5%. Uh, we're at 29610000 um, At this point in time, we um, will wait for what the legislature does, um, hopefully soon, within the next couple weeks, to see if any of these things will have to change. Um, we get additional money. Certainly, um, we can use it for um, other things, or we can reduce the tax levy, or we can... Take less out of the fund balance. Those are all options that we have. We'll yeah. um, you'll see that I, I have I have uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars right now, and that will be on the revenue uh, workshop on the seventeenth of April. Okay. So once we get those numbers from the legislature, when the budget passes, hopefully it won't be too late this year. Um, you'll see uh, right now I do have 250,000 coming out of um, unassigned fund balance. And that brings us to a zero impact of case scenario. Right, no increase in the tax levy. No guarantee. A zero impact. I had to go fast. It's eight o'clock. It's five. Yeah. 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 Anybody has any questions? Right. Then we have a motion to adjourn. Dan, seconded by Kim. All those in favor? Thank you all, and again, apologies for going so late. Appreciate it. Thank you.